Aspetta un po' di us, grazie alla cappetta. Gabriella, cappetta from Vodafone. She is involved in human resources and she is actually um, has been invited to St. Martin's. In this scheme, if I will allow her to explain what is circulated of bringing in people for an experience with Vodafone. Um, uh, we have the pleasure as well of having done a good job of her experience at Vodafone in a number of departments. Okay, we I think it will be of about in total an hour, 40 minutes. Okay, and then you'll be able to ask any questions that you may have from the scheme. I believe the scheme closes at the end of February. Okay, so then, and then don't accept late applicants. Sometimes we have people, not, not in this class, coming in after the closing of the exams, remember that they haven't applied for the exams, so they do not accept late applicants, so you don't care. Okay, thank you very much. Um, 
just to share with you as well some of the hobbies. I like reading and learning. And I would stress this that you never know enough in life. So it's important to, to continue to continue learning. And obviously I mean women will understand me by shopping. <laughs> so what I wanted to share with you a bit was like the story. So the Vodafone group. Um, Vodafone started in the UK in 1985. And uh, um, maybe some of you do not know, Malta was essentially the first subsidiary company which came out of the group. And that happened in 1990. So we've been, uh, Vodafone has been in Malta for the past um, 22 years. Um, obviously from Malta to worldwide. So this represents our footprint in, um, in the world, essentially. Um, um, we have uh, equity interests in over 30 countries. So where actually Vodafone owns an equity in, uh, in the countries and also more than 40 partner markets around the world. Um, how have we changed? I mean, many of you will probably do not remember the old TSL e-tax phones, okay? Just to give you an idea, these were the size of the um, remote control of the television. I once recall my mother, in fact, going out um, in a hurry from, from our home and she actually took in her handbag the remote control of the TV and not the phone. Um, obviously now this has changed to, to the smartphones that, that we have available today and one of them is obviously the iPhone. Um, uh, we have also changed from being very exclusive, so giving certain products, I would say, and certain uh, phones purely to the business. However, today they're essentially enjoyed by the mass market. Um, uh, and we have also changed the, the business not only from mobile only, however, we also offer a to what we refer to as a total telco solution to businesses. So even offering them internet connection and also of its line. Um, uh, speaking of the business itself, I think innovation is, uh, is, is our most important um, uh, recipe, I would say. So uh, from tel telecommunications to the web, to the media, um, uh, probably you know most of the products that we offer, so having an internet key um, to be always connected, um, uh, the mobile phones, tablets, you know, new devices, we're, we're always trying to introduce new devices and also packaging them with, with the products as well. I will pass on to Gabby now, so she will take you through the remainder of the presentation. Caroline. Um, having worked for Vodafone for the past 11 years, I have seen a lot of changes in the company. I have seen a lot of cultures, different cultures. Every two to three years, um, we used to have guidelines from Vodafone Group. As you know, Vodafone is an international company, and uh, uh, Vodafone Group in the UK used to send us um, every couple of years or so new guidelines on how to operate. This is our, our uh, guideline that has been uh, in place for about two years now, and I think it's going to, to stick around. Um, I think it's the one which is most uh, easy to, to follow and, uh, and easy to, to convey the message as well. Uh, we operate, in, we call it the Vodafone way, and we try to operate with speed, with simplicity, and with trust. What do we mean by these three words? First of all, when we talk about speed, um, what we really mean is that we we want to give the best service to the customer and we want to do it quickly. And in reality, that's, that's what it means, it's very simple. We try to empower our employees as well to give the best possible customer service and other, other, other issues and other things in, in a speedy way, in a, in a quick way. When we talk about simplicity, what we've done in the past two years is, in frank and in, in plain words, we try to cut all the red tape that we have in, in, in the company and you, you, you find a lot of red tape in a lot of large organizations. So what we did is we, we went through all our processes, met with all the stakeholders in the company to, to just make processes really <coughs> simple for employees to follow and for us to be more efficient. And when we talk about trust, we try to operate with trust. We mean that we have empowered our employees further and we actually trust them uh, with a lot of important information, confidential information, and uh, we want our customers to trust us as well when we are when we are interacting with them. So this is just 
I'm not going to go into much detail, but I just wanted to let you know that we try to live this culture at Holy Um <coughs> This is our vision, and this is what we uh, <coughs> what we want to do. What we want our our employees to to understand and to learn and to live every day. And, and this is just what we're, we're talking about uh, every day at the phone. We strive to enrich our customers' lives through an unmatched experience by empowering our people to deliver innovative, reliable, and simple solutions in full recognition of our commitment to the environment and society. So I think this says it all, so I'm not, I'm not going to delve into it too much. I'm just going to give you an idea of the employee benefits we offer to our employees and then I'll go a bit uh, more into detail about the program we're actually offering to students. But I'm just going to, to go really quickly through these benefits because I want you to understand like what our what working for Vodafone is like. So this is just a part of it. But as you can see we have quite a number of benefits. If we compare ourselves to other large organizations in Malta, I think we are one of the companies that offers the most uh, valuable benefits. And uh, if you, even if you speak to our employees and if you talk to people who have worked for Vodafone for a number of years, you, can, you will notice that people come and stay at Vodafone. So um, uh, Caroline has been there for how long? Um, seven years now. Seven years, I've been there for 11 years, and 30% uh, of, our, of our employees have been there for more than 10 years. So we have quite a a good, a good number of people who can stay because not because only of the benefits of course but um, we have a good number of things why people decide to remain at home okay so um, i'm just going to take you through uh, the program that we have for students at the moment on top you have a couple of pictures of past students who have participated in the program this program is not only run in Malta, but is also run across the globe. So uh, wherever we have operating companies, um, there are different programs for different uh, students studying either for degrees or have um, recently graduated. The, the program that we offer in Malta is for students who are still studying, so who have not yet obtained their degree. Um, we originally opened this program two years ago, and it was only available to um, students who were attending the University of Malta. However, um, uh, when we launched the program this year, because every year we participate at the Careers Week, I was approached by St. Martin's to see whether we can you know, start collaborating with, with St. Martin's students as well, and we decided to open this, this facility of application to, to your students as well. So um, I don't know if you have seen the, the uh, brochures we have, we have uh, I think they were sent to the students, yes. <coughs> Um, there is a lot of information on the brochure, uh, on, on what the program is all about, and what you should do to apply and what not. Um, but I'm going to just take you through uh, the actual program and, and how it works out. So the program starts at the end of June, usually when students have finished their lecture for the summer period, or they start of their summer period. And uh, between June and September, the students are asked to work because they are truly working with us for a, on a full-time basis. So they will be working on a 40-hour week basis and they will be receiving a salary just uh, like normal other employees. They will have benefits just like the other normal employees for that period of time. And the program runs for one year. Now what happens after September and people return, students return to the lectures. So what we did is, uh, we're very flexible, we sit down with the students after the summer period has, has, gone, has gone by, we see um, how their performance was, we usually have some uh, individual development training as well for the students, depending on which area they will be working in. And between October and next June, so uh, the remaining period of, of nine months, they are asked to work on a part-time basis which is for a minimum of 10 hours a week. So as you can see, we're very flexible. We know that during the winter period, you are busier with your lectures, you have a busier schedule. Some of you may be uh, sitting for exams as well, or you might have your thesis to work on. So we try not to uh, hinder your studies by asking you to, to work for us a number of extra hours. However, we do not stop the program at the end of September, otherwise it would be a summer job. We don't, we don't want this to be a summer job. We want you students to be benefiting for the whole year of the program. And by benefiting, we mean 
a lot of things. For example, we can help you out in your thesis if you ask if you choose to um, prepare your thesis, and the thesis obviously is related to telecommunications, for example. And uh, at the same time, we'll be giving you a network, uh, free phone, um, the phone the line for the home internet. So you have a number of benefits that you can still use during the winter months and not just for the summer months. So this is this is the win-win situation that we want for students. So you will be working, receiving a salary, but at the same time, you are getting a lot of information from the company, and you are getting a lot of mentoring and coaching and help for your thesis if you decide. As I said, to to um, base your thesis on, on on telecommunications. This is basically just a little program that 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 I would like to share with you uh, for this program. So what happens is that when you start in June or or whenever we decide that you need to start, there is an initial training phase, depending on the area that you will be working in. Now most of the students usually ask me like, but how is the selection process and what happens and how do you place the students? First of all, students are placed in, in fields, in areas related to their studies. So if you are studying finance, we're not going to place you like in, in commercial, for example, we'll place you in the finance area. Um, I don't know if you're studying IT. Uh, there are a number of areas where you can work, but we're not going to put you in an area that is completely not related to your, to your field, because obviously we want this program to, to, to be helpful to your studies. So what happens is this, after the applications, what we do is we screen all the applications to see whether these students apply and have uh, criteria on what we can, we can decide to select them. And we choose a number of final students who would be attending um, an assessment day. We do an assessment day, it's usually held in April, and uh, we have external people who come to help us to assess the students. We have, and we spend the day with the students in a very informal environment where we do a number of, of exercises just to get to know you better and to help us assess if you are the right people to join Vodafone. And out of those number of students, then we select a final number of students who will be actually participating in the program starting end of June or beginning of July, depending on when the students finish their, their exams. Um, this year, we're choosing uh, between eight to 10 students. So uh, we have uh, a number of different students. So far, we've received about 80 applications already, but we're hoping for more applications to come in. Um, uh, one important criteria for selection, we don't have many rules or regulations or criteria, however, a very important criteria is that the student cannot be at the, during the first year of the studies and cannot be in the final year of the studies. Why? Because when they're in their final year of studies, the students are going to graduate and they're going to look for a full-time job. So this is not really going to benefit them. We need people to join this program who are still studying, obviously. Why? Because during summer you want to work uh, on a full-time basis, but during winter it's a part-time kind of a part-time job. Um, uh, if, you, if you are in the final year of studies and you're still interested, you can still speak to us because we can obviously take your applications for uh, full-time opportunities that you might have. Um, one very good thing about this program is that once you finish the program and you keep on with your studies, if we've obviously decided that, that you're a good asset to the company and we don't want to lose you, we might offer you an actual full-time employment when you finish your studies, when you graduate. We've had students, we've had our students who have participated in the program and who are currently in their final year of studies, but who already know that when they finish, they have a secured job with us because obviously we decided to, 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 to choose them to remain with us. So this program is a good opportunity for you to showcase your talent with us, obviously. And we have decided to, to, uh, to launch this program. Why? Because we are looking for fresh talent. And fresh talent nowadays comes from, from you students. So, uh, we're looking for innovative people, we're looking for flexible people, and uh, obviously we're the best people, we're the best ambassadors of what we're really looking for. Um, I don't know if you have any questions about the program, uh, if you want to ask something about the application, um, I think there's some information. Yes. If you want to apply, you can log into our website. And there is all the information about the program. We used, I don't know if you have a very used carrier passport, which is a, is a, 
is a CV management system where you can create your profile and uh, place your CV and we will have your updated profile uh, in our live database and you will be applying directly for the program. So what happens is once you apply, you will receive an acknowledgement. Once we screen all the CVs, and this will happen around about end of March or mid to end of March, we will be um, contacting the students, either if they have been selected or shortlisted to attend the assessment day, or even if they are not shortlisted. So you will definitely know uh, what, what what's going to happen. If you are selected for the um, uh, assessment day, then what happens is we invite you over uh, to come and join us during the assessment day. And usually the day after the assessment day, we have already contacted, we have already contacted the students who were selected for the program because we don't like to keep people waiting. So uh, this is basically it. This is uh, the information that we had for you today. I don't know if you have any questions regarding, or uh, are there any of you who have already applied for the program? No. Did you see the flyer? Okay, so you have information. Um, would you be interested to apply? Uh, do you have any, I don't know, questions about how it works out? Uh, or maybe the different areas where we, we, uh, we can place you? Let me just ask you to see uh, a bit the, the audience we have today. What, uh, what course are you doing? Can you just ask each one of you to tell us what course are you doing? I'm going to start from the IT. IT? You're all IT? Okay. Economy and finance. Finance? Okay, yes. Business administration with more. Okay, so same. Economics and management. Perfect. Formation systems. Same thing. And what do you know? Formation systems. I am. Banking. Economics and management. Okay. So the computer and the program de development. Yes. I'm an agent. Okay. I agree. Okay. So we have an area of, of, of faculties and uh, we have a mix, which is very good because the, if you go out and find a lot of university students programs out there, you will, you will notice that most of them are related to, to very uh, specific areas. Most of them are financial areas and uh, maybe IT. So business and marketing is a bit of a... Of a when I participate in the Mary's Week, for example, most students tell me we don't usually see companies who are offering programs to the, these different faculties. Usually it's either finance, mostly, or IT. So what we try to do in, with this program is reach different kinds of, of areas, not just financial areas or IT areas. For example, in marketing, uh, this year we've had three students who have participated in the program. We had uh, students working in business intelligence. I, I heard that there are some people studying economics, and we really look for good people who are studying economics at the moment. I was telling Mr. Zemo last time that we really have a difficulty when we get to employ people. We had a problem in marketing recently. Uh, we were looking for people to work in marketing, but who have studied economics, and it's really difficult, because usually the people who study economics are not interested in marketing. Or vice versa. Or vice versa. Um, I was looking at the layout of the thing there. Uh, what's the nature of the first assignment and the second assignment? How will you be asked to work? Yes, let's just go. Because um, it says we'll be taking part in the assignment. So yeah, yeah. But when we're talking about an assignment, we're not asking you to actually do an, an assignment like you do for your right. studies. We call this the first assignment because when you finish your, your, summer, your summer period, you've just finished kind of the first module of the program. What we do then is you sit down with your line manager in the area that you have been working in, and he will pinpoint uh, you know, uh, the, the, the areas where you've really performed well, the areas where you, it's like a performance review. And he will discuss with you any areas where you need development. What we do as well when we finish the, the first assignment, the three months module of the summer, is we take the, the students who are actually participating in the program for, a, for a, a personal development training session. We have external people who are very good at this, and we take them again to an informal environment, and we sit down with the students to see how the three months have progressed, and if they have any problems, if they want any areas for development, and we prepare them then for their next nine months of lectures because they will be going in for their next assignment. What happens then after the second nine months is 
when they obviously finish the one year of the program. The program runs between June and June of the next year. So next June we're going to start the program and it will end in June 2013. Um, after the end of the program, what we do is we sit down with the line managers who have actually worked with these students and we try and ask and see if any of the students have potential to become full-time employees when they actually finish their studies. We're actually going through it this year for the, the, the past students to see if we're going to, to keep any of them. And when we talk about keeping them, it's not like, okay, thank you very much, the program finished by, and that's it. We try to keep in touch with them as well. Um, uh, we, we ask them to, to participate in focus groups, even the past students. We try and keep uh, a good relationship. It's not just you participate in the program, okay, by, that's it. You know, I mean, and obviously those students who have big potential and they can stay on if, if we decide to, to choose them for a, for a particular full-time job as well. For example, the students have also participated with us during careers week. They do testimonials as well. Uh, they talk in, in their lectures about their actual uh, experience at Vodafone. So I think it's a very good win-win situation for both the students and both the organization. How flexible is the 10 hours a week of work? Yes, we try to be quite flexible. In fact, Caroline has people working in her area as well. Um, I have some people working in, in, in the HR area uh, participating in the program as well. What happens after September is that you obviously go back to your lectures and you're quite busy. Um, we try to keep this an hour a week because during the winter months, we want to keep you committed as well. So uh, what we ask you is, either to work from home during the 10 hours, maybe participate in, in, in some meetings that we have, some activities that we organize within the company, so that you still keep uh, in touch with the company. Um, however, we have people who, for example, during the holidays, work more than 10 hours, because they're obviously more available. So we're quite flexible. It's not just a fixed 10 hour. We had started off, actually, at a minimum of 20 hours a week, and then we realized that students are busy and they cannot keep to that to that amount of hours a week, so we decided to go down to ten. But obviously, you can work more than that. The minimum, the minimum is ten because then less than ten is a bit is a bit of a difficulty for you to keep in touch with the actual job that you're doing. Some students are also given projects to do during their, their actual role, so they can stay at home and work on their project from home. We don't necessarily we have we have a a very good culture at the phone. We really push teleworking. I mean. In my, in my office, for example, it's a must that one day a week you work from home. I mean, you have to do it. We, we push people to do it. So students also have this opportunity to work from home. We're quite flexible, yes. Especially when you have your exams. The student I have in my area, for example, in, in February, she hardly came to the office because obviously she had her exams and they totally understand it. As I said, the program is not aimed to, to, to stop you from studying. On the other, I mean, on the contrary, it's there to help you understand your studies even better and to give you a bit of a push and a bit of a help whilst you're studying as well. Because at the end of the day, you'll be earning money and you have a lot of other benefits as well. And it is a case by case arrangement, sort of, as well, with the manager of the section. So if you prefer to come one day and work the full 10 hours, that's fine as long as there is the arrangement between the student and the manager. Yeah? Can you explain something about the customer experience? Yes. Experience? Okay, so what we believe in at Vodafone is that in whichever area you're going to work, you need to be a bit customer oriented. Why? Because at the end of the day, our business is all about our customers. So, irrespective of the area in which you will be working, um, what we do is obviously the first week we'll be training in your actual area. So, if, for example, I have a student in HR. Obviously, I will give her the, the, the projects on which I would like her to work on and uh, explain some more information about the actual human resources requirements during the first week. However, then I have sent, for example, our student for a one day um, uh, to be in our call center, for example, to listen to what customers have to say. She spent a whole day, or usually we do half a day, depending on, 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 on the circumstances, um, where the student is going to learn what being a customer care representative <coughs> is all about, but just listening to customer calls, obviously not working with the customer. Then we send them for a day in our, uh, in our stores, in our flagship stores, 
so that they meet the customers face to face. They wouldn't be actually serving the customer, but they would be observing the other reps working with the customers. While to understand better our products, I can't just have someone working with us from day one, listen, okay, do this, do this, this. They have to understand the whole phone culture first. And we really strive about induction. A normal full-time employee goes through four months of induction. The actual program is, is four months long. So, uh, you know, uh, trying to, to squash all that for a student in, in three months is a bit difficult. So we try to keep it uh, very simple. Then they spend one day with our outbound uh, salespeople who actually call our customers um, to do what we call, like for example, courtesy calls, health checks. They try to maybe sell uh, our products, see, see uh, what the customer needs. So you have like three whole days working uh, directly with the customer, not actually working, but observing what they're working. Then obviously the three months starts from there after that initial kind of first one or two weeks of, of induction. What we're, we're talking about the midterm evaluation is what I mentioned, it's the performance review that you have with the line manager at the end. You actually meet with, with the HR people as well after the first three months. Um, it's like a, a health check as well. I usually meet the students after the first three months to see like how they were progressing, if there are any, any issues that they have, if there's anything that they don't like, what they like, uh, any feedback they can give me about the program, maybe we can change things. So uh, that's basically the evaluation. And then obviously the next nine months uh, are spent on a part time basis. During the winter months, I don't really meet the, the, the students, but however, we have a good communication plan. We, I mean, they're not physically at the office most of the time, but we still communicate a lot. When, when Gabriella was um, um, explaining the vision, one word that there is in the vision is an unmatched customer experience. And we really, really believe in that. So whether you're working in the stores, or whether you're taking a call at the call center, or whether you're working at the back office, we strongly believe that um, we all need to deliver this unmatched customer experience to the customer. We all feel obliged and we all feel responsible. So um, it is part of this program that um, the student will have these customer experiences and we also push our own employees. So if you're working in back office, it is important for you to spend the day in the shops or to spend the day listening to what actually our customers are telling us when they go to 4 7. So essentially, that is what that means. We do it with our top management as well. So top management, every so often, they're invited to spend a day in our shops. So even the CEO. Yes. Okay. <laughs> and we do it often. Why? Because in two to three months, things change. We're a very dynamic organization, and the telecommunications industry, as you know better than us, <laughs> is ever so changing. So what we do uh, is every six to six months to one year, we invite all the top management to spend some time with our customer-facing people. Why? Because they need to understand what the customers actually want and how we are serving our customers. Otherwise, you know, we can't change our processes, we can't make them easier, we can't make them more efficient because we don't know what's, what's out there. So that's basically why we do it. Having said that, you, most of the students do not work directly with the customer because they are obviously placed in different areas that are not related directly to the customer. But they, from experience, they've told us that this has helped them a lot to understand the job better and to obviously uh, relate uh, even most of the students can relate themselves to our customers when we talk about the prepaid plans and when we had like the angry birds competition uh, most of the students took care of, of, of yes, yes, yes. some of the marketing students participated in the beer fest promotions that we had for example and last summer we had the android village so uh, you will also have the opportunity to participate in actual events and probably having uh, worked on the project yourself. Because we're talking about the marketing area here, but we have other areas where, where people are going to the place, obviously. Just to give you an idea of the areas, we have uh, financial areas where people can be placed. We have technology, IT, uh, information systems, as most of you mentioned. Uh, we have business intelligence, we have HR, we have legal, we have the commercial areas, the marketing areas. So it's not just one area where people can work. Uh, so the program is quite flexible and it's open to an array of, of, of areas as well. Yes. Can you give some 
examples of the jobs in those areas? Of course. Like? Let me give you just an example of the area, in, in, of my area, because obviously that's the one I'm more proficient in. Um, uh, the student who, who works in my area is studying public policy. And what we did is with her, we went through all the health and safety policies that we have in the company to try and simplify them, because as I said, we're trying to, to operate in a simpler way. And uh, she also works with our learning and development uh, manager, um, where she helps the learning and development manager to um, uh, get new collaboration and relationships with training institutes, for example. She goes with our L&D manager to meetings to understand better how the uh, employees are going to develop their, their, their career, for example. So uh, it's quite in line with her studies. Um, if you can talk about your marketing. Yeah. Yeah. In marketing, for example, there were people who were tasked um, to do insights and research with a, a special area that we have within marketing. Um, another person, for example, used to manage the online um, area, so Facebook, anything we put on our website. Um, and there was another student who was um, in charge of what we term terminals, which are essentially the handsets. So the management of the handsets, what we put out in the market, and certain analysis on handsets as well. Um, talking about IT, uh, the students I know that are working in IT, for example, one of them for sure, I know that is um, uh, her, her duty is to check um, and access um, uh, information. For example, when we have new employees joining the company, this person is uh, checking that the person has the right access for the right uh, applications. When an employee terminates, it's, it's uh, based on security. So she was stationed with the actual people working on, on security and uh, she has like her own area of people uh, to check and everything. So, there are different areas in, in, in which one can work and from past experiences we've been told from the students that they are quite happy because they have been finally given <laughs> a project to work on which is related to their studies and this is this is the important this is actually the the gist of the whole program. When I just to interrupt a bit when I met Gabby, I made sure and I knew that because I've known Volta from when it was Telesend, they've been they were now our customers for a very long time. Uh, that this wasn't the sort of uh, cheap labor type of, no. of program where you were asked to um, serve coffee and uh, do all the filing, mm -hmm. uh, which had been so. So it is a real experience, actually, and um, it is also a selective experience. So not everybody who applies will be part of the program. So even in that in that aspect, I think the way that can be explained how they do the selection. It's not just they look at your CV application and say this one yes, that one no. But there is a whole selection process that if I was a student today, I would I would want to experience that type of of selection process. Hopefully, I'll be selected. But even not, it's an experience. And and Gabby promised as well that they give feedback even to those students who wouldn't have been selected. Yes. Why? So yes. you would be able to learn from your experience and improve yourself for when you have to go in front of others. HR people, um, uh, when you graduate or before, to, to seek a job. This is uh, it's something that you'd have to experience. You can't just go over to, to an interview, unprepared, down phase, sort of uh, lounging around. You have to prepare yourself as well. And I think this is um, one of the most positive experiences that you can get out of the program. Some questions that I've been asked recently are, uh, for example, is this program open only to, to Maltese nationals? It is not only open to Maltese nationals, but obviously in some areas we need to have Maltese speaking people. So uh, there could be areas where uh, maybe people who are not proficient in the Maltese language uh, would have a difficulty to work. So we've actually opened it to, to everyone. We're not selective about being Maltese or not. Maltese, but there are certain areas where obviously people cannot really apply. So uh, some people have but asked me, so I, I just wanted to make this clear. Exactly, exactly. So it depends. At the end of the talk, a vote of who is an international company, so I'm sure it, there is no, no issue of gender equality or, or whatever it can kind of into it. One thing that I wanted to clarify, because I'm sure that is what you meant, but I, I don't want students to misinterpret. Mm -hmm. When you spoke about um, doing a dissertation in a telecommunications company, mm -hmm. that did not mean that it has to do with the no. actual telecommunications, which means in every aspect yeah, of telecommunications, yes. Okay? Yes. 
every expert. So anybody could even write an application and app which can be downloadable on, 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 a, on, a, on a mobile device. So not necessarily mm -hmm. yes, 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 building yes, yes. a new uh, a 4G or a 5G exchange or something. Like this. And also they are not necessarily bound to be doing the dissertation related to yes. the telecom. Yes. So it can be non-related. So we're just helping you, we're just offering you an external just if you decide to, to do so. Yes. You also mentioned something about not being in your first or final year. Like at the moment, I'm in my second year, but when yeah. I'm doing the nine months part time, I will be in my final year. Yes, that's okay. But when you started the program, you have not started. You have not no. started. Right. So right. yes, that's it. That's what we mean. But do you understand why we do not want, we do not actually accept the student to be in, in the final year? Because what happens is that during the winter months, the student would actually be looking for a full time job. So this program, as you can understand, also. The salary for, for people participating in this program is not the actual salary that a full-time employee would earn, it's a little less. So the student would not be really benefiting if he would be in his, uh, finish his studies and, and working on this program. So that's why we need students who are still studying. And, and during the school months, mm -hmm. the salary would be even more reduced, right? Pro rata for the 10 hours. Yes. Right? yes because yes, therefore yes. it won't impact on your stipends. Yes, yes, yes. Okay, yes, because yes, obviously, yes. otherwise, if you get a full salary, you're not, you're not supposed you to be getting exactly, a stipend, okay? Yes, 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 but right. it also yes. impacts on your stipend. It's all in addition to what you're earning yes, from your stipend. Yes. Okay? We know there's a lot of students, um, just, just a moment, um, uh, work on a part time basis to support their studies. So we're offering this, this as well. Why? Because we want students to be earning that little extra money instead of doing a part-time job that is totally unrelated to their studies. In this way, you would be still working, but still kind of studying. So that's, that's very important for us. Yes, um, when you said students must not be in their first year either, yes. does it mean that if they've completed their first year, they've set for their first batch of exams, they still? Yes, they can apply. They We're can. talking about people who are still doing lectures during their first year. And, and why are we talking about first year uh, students in, the, in this sense? Because from past experiences, when we had, we've had people who studied actually, uh, who participated in the program and were in their first year of studies. However, we had a couple of people who, who when they came to, to work for the further nine months, they told us, listen, I think I'm going to, to change my line of studies completely. I'm going to change my faculty. Because during the first year, maybe you are still kind of deciding, uh, you're still finding your way. So it was okay, maybe during the first year, this program is not really going to help them. So we decided to, to limit it to people who are not in their first year, not in their final year, for, for this reason. And also, we've noticed that people who are in the first year sometimes lack a bit of experience in the sense that. I don't want to sound, but they are less mature, maybe. So uh, maybe in your first year, you was, as I said, you would be still finding your way <laughs> around, and maybe this is not the right program for, for these people. But again, we accept all applications, and then we filter them one by one, together with our line managers, to see like, uh, if there is potential. Because our programs are a bit different, maybe in mind, you have the University of Water programs with mm -hmm. students. Um, specialize after yes, their yes. first years. Ours are slightly different. They're more compact. Mm -hmm. They go in straight away with their areas of specialization. Okay. And from experience, we know that they don't change. That okay. Very in that much. case, in that so case, so we'll be ready to consider. I think we should explain that a bit better to you. Oh, okay. Very good. Uh, good to know because I I, I didn't have uh, like like this in mind. So yes, as I said. Um, when you are going to apply for, for the program, even if you are in the first year, the system is, is going to allow you to, to apply. So if there's, no, there's no mechanism that tells you, okay, you're in the first year, okay, no, you can't apply. No, that doesn't happen. We're, going, we're still going to review your application. So first of all, we we'll keep in mind that applications coming in from St. Martins, we're going to look at them like in, in a different structure. And obviously, if you are in your first year, but you still want to apply in that case, yes, you can apply. Yes. Obviously, this is the first time we're, we're actually exactly. opening it yes. to, to, to this institute, so maybe it's a we have experience from both mm -hmm. Yes. Just, just to make sure that um, everybody understands, mm -hmm. is that unlike 
for example, University of Malta, where you have, say, let's say economics, it's spread practically all over yes, with the micro one, micro two, micro three, and macro one, macro two, macro three. If we're dealing with economics and it is a foundation unit, during the first year, students do all the economics, micro and macro that need to be done. Okay. So there is a solid okay. background of. of um, but then, yet again, um, we have said the students who don't mature even after graduation, <laughs> and, some, and some of them are mature the minute they walk into the school. So that is something yes, yes, we yes, have yes, no yes. control over. That. In fact, that's why we organize the assessment day then. Yes, because, exactly. as we said, we don't select people just from looking at their CVs. We don't believe in that. We need to meet people. So that's why we, we spend the whole day with them. It obviously all depends on the individual and exactly. what you want to get out of this. Exactly. And that's what's nice about mm -hmm. it, because actually every single person here um, relies on himself or herself to do it. No, that's, it's not something that either of the faculty is going to be present or making no, gold right. stars or black stars or red stars or whatever, no. nothing of this sort. Mm -hmm. We're not involved in it, you do the selection. We'd be very happy if you select them all, but uh, that's, <laughs> your, that's your choice. <laughs> That's One important right. thing I would like to mention is that when the students um, are approached and they're offered the, the actual program, if they accept, they need to sign a contract. But don't be alarmed that this contract is not binding you for anything in particular. We're just asking you to sign a contract. Why? Because in the nature, during the nature of your job, you're going to, to be handling confidential information. So we asked you to sign a confid confidentiality clause, for example. The program, it runs for one year, but if for any reason you decide that you do not want to continue the program, we're not going to stay there like pointing <laughs> guns at you telling you, no, we have to remain. There is no penalty to pay if you want to stop. Obviously, you stop benefiting from the benefits we have, but that's it. Um, I've had students in the past, very few, but I've had students in the past who said, listen, I decided I don't want to, to, to uh, keep doing the program. Thank you very much. Thank you for your experience, thank you for all the work you've done for us, and that's it. But we don't, you know, ask the rest, no, you have to spend at least three months with us, and I think it's not our nature, and for the purpose of this program, we don't do this. We don't actually uh, bind you with contracts, or with clauses, or with penalties. We, we, that's not what we want from you, that's not what we want from this program. So it's important, because I've had people in the past who are worried before signing the contract, like, but listen, what if something happens? But I have a student, for example, this year who, after the summer, she joined uh, um, other, she had other commitments, and she said, listen, it's going to be very tough for me, and I can't give you my 100%, so I decided to stop. No problem, we can discuss. Everyone, it, we, we really treat it on a case-by-case -case basis, so it's important that you know that we're very flexible, because in the end, that's what we want. We want to be flexible, and we want to be flexible. Yes. You also mentioned the big range of departments which yes. students apply for, and you said something like you've had already had 80 applicants, yes. but there's something like 10 spaces. Now, those 10 spaces, are they equally allocated between departments? No. Or does it work? No. no. So there's no. What we do, what we do is, out of all the applications that we receive, we start then, you know, shortlisting potential people. Right. If, for example, in the HR area I do not have any potential applicants, then this year I won't have a student in the HR area. I'm not going to replace. My 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 uh, my missing person with someone else just to have. So it's not you need to fill two seats in a class. No, two no, seats no. And what we do, what we actually do is um, uh, during these months, what I what I've been doing is I've been going around departments and speaking to line managers to see the requirements. So yes, okay. Then I would say yes in HR. I would really do with a student this year. I would really want someone to be here. But uh, again, if we don't find the right people, then it's not, a, it's, not, I mean, it's not going to be the end of the world, but we're not going to replace that missing place with someone from IT just to have you know, someone working with us in that area. We've had, for example, last year we had this particular student during the assessment day who was studying finance. And uh, the finance people said, oh, no, but I don't see the students working in, in, in my area. Not really, not really. And then there was another particular manager who said, I would really see this person working in BI, in business intelligence. And the student had never worked in BI, and she was exploring BI as part of her studies, but it was not the focus. 
we approach the students and we said, listen, we have this, this, this area where we would like you to work in. Would you, would you like to work in that area instead of the area you actually thought you would work in? She said yes. And today she's very happy in that area, talking about the BI areas. So, as I said, we're quite flexible and we need to invest on the actual assessment day because when we meet the, the people, when we actually meet them, we sit down for a couple of hours, or last year we spent like four hours discussing when they left where we're going to place these people. And that's really when we decide where these people really need to be placed. So again, we're very flexible in that. And we've had three people in technology, three people in marketing, one in finance, one in HR. So no, we don't equally allocate the places, no. Depends on the, on the requirements as well. Yes. Last uh, question, please, because I'm afraid I can send myself have lectures. So uh, you can stay, actually, but we would have to Are well, the students entitled to leave in summer? Yes, of course. And it's up, is there the case that sometimes students work more than 40 hours a week? or And how does that work? Mm, more than 40 is a bit difficult. In summer, the people who work more than 40 maybe participate, for example, in events. Like, as I said, we had the beer fest and people in marketing obviously needed to be there because it was their project. So, to work more than 40 hours is a bit unlikely in summer. Yes, they are entitled to leave, even in the winter months, obviously on a lot of basis, depending on the number of hours they work. As I said, the people participating in this program are treated equally, just like any other full-time employee. The only little benefits that they don't get is, for example, the health insurance policy that we only offer to permanent um, employees. Because in your, in your case, you would be employed as a temporary employee. However, most of the telecommunications benefits and other things that we offer to the employees, like leave, sick, and whatever, yes, they are there. So we can apply to the, to the website? Yes. The, uh, Let me just go to it again. Yes. Yes. We have the physical brochures as well. Yes. Here, here, right? There are brochures as well, and if you just go into our either our Facebook page and leave us a, if you have some queries about it, go into code for Malta on Facebook. You can you can send us a, a message or leave us a, a comment, and we reply to you within 48 hours. But you can also go into the website, which is www.vogelform.com.mt. Click on the careers section, and one of the actual vacancies that we have is called the University Students Program. And regarding the position, I can leave it blank down. Yes, the yes, yes, yes. It's with yourselves who decide which department. What we do, have. what we ask you when you apply to the website is in which year of studies you are in, uh, if you are specializing, if you are doing masters after you finish, for example, the course, and to to um, supply your CV. Basically. And then regarding position, this is you yourself. So you yes, we do all the work then. <laughs> <Good>. <laughs> because we screen, I'm telling you, we screen them literally one by one. Because that's what we do. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much. <laughs>